trying to sneak a win, but you want every opportunity to do it. in Tampa, Florida. This is Pro Box TV. We don't promote boxers. We promote boxing. Tonight, our Wednesday night fights here on your boxing channel come to you live from right here inside the Pro Box TV event center, along with my powerful partners, the former two-time world champion, the magic man, Paulie Malinaji, former world champion, Chris Algieri. I am Mike Goldberg. We have three great fights for you tonight, and we are excited to bring them to you on a Wednesday night live from right here in our headquarters. We get things started with a six round super featherweight matchup. It's a Puerto Rican showdown. 27 year old, six and one, Carlos Rosario, trained by the future Hall of Famer. Ivan Calderon fights 22-year-old Dominic Valle, 5-0, oh, with four finishes. Our co-main event is eight rounds in the lightweight division. The two-time Mexican national amateur champion, who, yes, went 665 and 12 before turning pro, 19-year-old Oscar Alvarez Jr. puts his unbeaten record on the line against Sao Paulo, Brazil's Jonathan Cardoso. And in our main event, Event of the evening, we have a 10-round matchup in the featherweight division. 18-2, and two, Saul, the B. Sanchez, well-known to boxing fans, Mexican, all-action fighter, and he really wants to put on a show against his opponent from Venezuela, Franklin Gonzalez. 25 wins, 25 knockouts. Needless to say, always ready and willing to exchange. Hi again, everybody. Mike Goldberg. I've already talked about Paulie and Chris. So let's go right to you, Magic Man. It's a crossroads fight in our main event. In the fighter meetings with Saul Sanchez, he's won six of his last seven. He said to us about his lone loss, hey, it's boxing, it happens. I keep training, I keep moving forward. It's a great attitude. Not only that, I mean, it's a split decision. It's, you know, he, he uh, uh, you look at Sanchez's record and you could easily say, man, it's got a break here, break there, could be undefeated. Two split decision losses really, really are razor thin at that point. He's also a guy who's not afraid to test himself against good opposition. Not only has he fought good opposition, this guy's beaten good opposition. So he's quality, he's the goods, and of course, when you fight good opposition, you also put yourself at risk of losing. I think a win today continues to make him excel. He's coming off of the split decision loss, but at the same time, again, a razor thin loss. You get a win like this tonight, and you're right back on the horse. Chris, I would say that was magical. What Paulie did was basically describe what we give to you on Wednesday nights here on Pro Box TV. We give to you an opportunity for Franklin Gonzalez. You mentioned me earlier, Gonzalez, rough, tough, short, aggressive guy, and he's drawn comparisons to Pitbull Isaac Cruz. Well, you look at his record, 25 wins, 25 KOs. Listen, you don't know what the opposition looks like, but th there's something to say for that. If you knocked out every Every guy who stepped between the ropes with you, other than your two very close losses, you're a very dangerous guy. And like Paulie said, I mean, a win here catapults him right back into the mix, and he can take advantage of this opportunity, which a lot of the Pro Box fighters like to do. Yes, indeed. On Wednesday nights, it is all about Pro Box TV. Tonight, we are live from our world headquarters here in Tampa. So we are getting set to go here inside our world headquarters of Pro Box TV. And the first fight is one that should be ultra entertaining with Dominic Valle and Carlos Rosario. Dominic Valle, of course, has been one of, the, one of the first members of the Pro Box TV family. He and his older brother, Marcus. Dominic Valle, 22 years old, 5 and 0. Oh, four of those wins coming by knockout. Chris Algieri tonight, Dominic faces the most successful opponent so far in his professional career. Yeah, I mean, Carlos Rosario is, is no slouch. He has that one loss in there, but it was a close fight. He's got some big wins in his career. He's actually coming off a, re a really, really good win against a very, very tough fighter in Joshua RT Ortiz. And Rosario, I, I watched him tape on this kid. He can really fight. He has some things that can really challenge Valle. How about Carlos Rosario, 6-1? and one. And, Paulie, you talked about in the open the split decision setback 
Pro Man in our main event, same thing happened to Carlos. Yeah, and you know, uh, if I remember correctly, he was here on Pro Box TV, you know, and he, he just basically just let himself get out work that night. You know, he looked a little bit, looked a little bit sluggish, looked a little bit lethargic in there. And uh, I can remember Ivan Calderon telling me afterwards, you know, uh, the former world champion that trains him, telling me like, you know, now nah, I'm just gonna match him. Tell him, I'm gonna tell him, yo, you either gonna, uh, gonna get a poop or shit off the pot uh, or get off the pot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's about right. And, and you and kept it clean. Paulie kept it clean. Chris. I tried. Yeah, that's right. And Rosario, too, he, he, you know, he's fought all over all, so many yes. different weight classes. So, like like you said, champ, Ivan Carlton said, you got you to gotta step it up. You got to take this seriously. He's come down two weight classes since then. That's where he had that big win, you know, and now he's back fighting in the same weight class against another undefeated, very, very tough fighter in, in Dominic Valle. Well, and, and like the champ, champ said, he's coming off a good win now. Yeah, really good a win. very good he's, win. He's really... It, it, sometimes you need that fire to step to set it under you, which is why this matchup is really good right now. Yeah, really yeah he We're rebounded up from that ones. loss here on Pro Box TV, Paulie, and beat an unbeaten guy at 11 and 0 in Philadelphia, and that was a catchweight fight at 128, which was the lowest of his career. I am a hockey player. They never really made me cut weight. You guys have. <laughs> he was telling us how difficult those extra two pounds are. It's the truth, though, isn't it, Magic Man? Well, when you got nothing to lose, I mean, I remember people <laughs> telling me, like, you know, oh, well, it's only a couple of pounds. Yeah, but when you've already lost all of the weight, you know, you, you know, it's not two pounds the way you feel. It's the way, <laughs> two pounds the way I feel. Well, I've already lost all the weight, and my body doesn't want to lose any more weight. That's pretty much what Rosario is talking about when he talks about how it was so difficult to lose those last two pounds. Because... That means your body is at the point where it's lost all the weight it can lose. Did you cut weight for tonight? Uh, no, I did not, actually. I put on weight for tonight. Actually. I, was, I had tacos for lunch, so I definitely wasn't cutting weight today. Well, you see, you might cut weight later. You, uh, pooper don't get off the pot, right? Yeah. So we are, are set for Dominic Valle, Carlos Rosario. Now, this is magical. Not the first time, the second time. This is the third time this fight has been scheduled to happen. So taking that into account, Dominic Valle, Paulie, has not fought since November of last year. Yeah, yeah, this is why it's a dangerous fight for Valle. You know, Valle is uh, one, of, one of Pro Box TV's hot prospects, but I'm telling you, man, the, the, uh, the, the thing about Pro Box TV is good fighters and great fights, and you're not going to get any cherry picks, man. Yeah. You, you're going to have to fight your way through it. This is a matchup. We're opening up with Dynamite Time. Nobody gets babied here, even our guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that big win for Rosario was on April 29th, so he has had a tune-up to get ready for that match. And Dominic Valle in our first fight tonight. With the official introductions, let's get it over to Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Pro Box TV Events Center, this bout is scheduled for six rounds in the Super Featherweight Division. Esta pelea esta pautada a seis asaltos en el peso Super Pluma. Los jueces, your judges for this bout, Brian Gary. Shami Shipman and Joanne Richard. Your referee in charge, El Arbitro, is Christopher Young. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white, green, and purple, in La Esquina Azul, con pantalones blanco, verde, y morado. Pesando 129.6 libras, weighing in at 129.6 pounds. He is undefeated with a record of five wins, no losses, four wins by knockout. El esta invicto con record cinco victorias, cero derrotas, con cuatro por la vía del knockout. From Tampa, Florida, please welcome Dominic Valle. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue with white, in La Esquina Rojo, con pantalones azul y blanco, pesando 130, weighing in at 130 pounds, with a record of six wins, one loss, three wins by knockout, con record seis victorias, una derrotas con tres por la vía del knockout, de Vieques, Puerto Rico, Carlos El Tete. First fight of the
of the night in the super featherweight division. 22-year-old Dominic Valle, five years younger than his opponent. He is two inches taller and will have a two-inch reach advantage. Super featherweight matchup scheduled for six rounds. Rosario and Valle. A fight like this, both guys feel like they're the A-side. Both guys feel like they're the guy to watch. It's winning mentality on both guys, and it's going to translate should translate into a good fight. Here we go. It's time to fight. Blue and white trunks for six and one. Carlos Rosario, Dominic Valle, white, green, and purple. Good body work there from Azari. He's doing a nice job doing a little push and pull from the outside. Valle is a very aggressive guy, throws a lot of combinations when you're within range. Rosario has obviously watched some tape using a little bit of push pull so he can't get set to let those combinations go. Yeah, it's a smart tactic on his part, champ, you know, trying to disrupt the rhythm and also, you know, disrupt the, the ability for Valle to find his distance because when Valle does find his distance, he's a very busy guy. Yeah, he lets those hands rip. With this fight getting pushed back, not once, but twice. It has been seven months and 10 days since we have seen Dominic Valle. The fight was scheduled on January 26th, May, or pardon me, March 22nd. Finally, we get it tonight. Rosario, as I mentioned, just fought 52 days ago as he goes to the body. Yeah, Rosario's talking to the body a few times now early in this fight. Yeah, two of my keys to victory for Rosario were to use a push, uh, a pull, a pull counter, and also to hit the body because Valle has a long torso. And you also mentioned, as we will get to after this round, Chris, when you got the guy that he has in the corner, you listen to your corner. Yes, yeah, I mean, <laughs> oof, got a living legend. Nice uppercut there from Rosario as well. Yeah, he's mixing up the combinations nicely. By uh, smothering himself a little bit at times when he gets close. He's got to make these shots count. There it is again. It's, it's also, it's Rosario doing a good job of smothering him and causing Valle to smother himself. Rosario also staying off the ropes, very smart, because Valle, he likes to pin his guys there and let those hands go high and low. Older brother Marcus and Mark Ferre in the corner of Dominic Valle tonight. Final minute of round number one. Yeah, you can see Rosario, he's got a very good understanding of distance. He's just making Valle miss in and out, push, pull. And both these guys know how to fight. Oh! Valle's gotta be careful staying so square on the inside like that because he's opening himself up for the uppercut. That's one thing about Valle, he's, he's so offensive-minded at times, he, he, especially on the inside once he has got a guy in his range. Nice overhand right from Valle and a left hook. Ooh, oh, sneaky little shot. uppercut there. This fight's opening up now. Didn't take long for these two. Which what? is what we expected. One thing about Valle, he's gonna try to impose himself like this. You know, Rosario did a good job of change, staggering that distance, changing it up a little bit, but if, if Valle starts to get onto this kind of distance and this kind of rhythm, it's gonna get tougher for Rosario to keep control of this fight. And you can already see he's starting to lose control of it in these past 30 seconds. Action pack round one. Three minutes in, we've already had ebbs and flows yeah. <laughs> with, with both men being successful. See that action of already a heated, heated first round. See that uh, combination there by Rosario, and he finishes it with a nice little uppercut after going around the sides and getting Valle's gloves to stay up, stay short. Here again, see from the side and there, right, an uppercut as Valle, again, stays a little bit too square there, Champ, on the inside. Yeah, that's beautiful punch variation by Rosario, picking his spot, setting things up. Mark Frey. You hear me? We don't rest out there. Your legs gotta stay ready. Three minutes. Speed. Use your jab, use a double jab, you can walk this dude down. Bing, 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 all right? You got me? I got you. You heard me? Yep. Hit the body. Mark Ferre has said about the Valle brothers, they are our temperate. And last time we had fights, we had Dominic Valle's older brother, Marcus, and the same thing with Coach Mark. He said they're easy to work with. You'll never be a good teacher if you don't have a good student. Round number two, and these guys come out firing again. 
Yeah, Vare again try, try, coming out, trying to, with the intention to take control of the ring. He had a little trouble with that in the early first two thirds of the first round, but he started to take control of the ring in the end of the first round. And he's trying to get things started right away. As Mark Frey told him, you gotta work for three minutes. You know, Vai, Vai is, he, he found success in the first round by picking up the pace. You can see already in the second round, he's like, all right, that worked for me last round. Ooh, big shot again on the inside, that uppercut. And Chris, I was just about to mention that Rosario tends to move a lot and will look to counterpunch, which he did exactly that with that uppercut. Yeah, he's doing a great job of changing distance and changing range up and down, changing levels, and then picking his spots. He's, he's very crafty in there as Rosario. The problem is it's, it's not discouraging the, the pressure of Vaya. So you've, you've got to pick up the pace just a little bit more if you're going to keep up with Vaya. Though another good shot landed there by Rosario. I don't know. I know a few more uppercuts the way that Vaya's head's been getting popped up. I think he's going to get the surge. The surge. Stop his head. Stop his head. Stop. 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 As Paulie mentioned, oh, okay. when we were at the test, lone loss was here against then 5-0 Ezekiel Barrera. An undefeated fighter in a bigger weight class for Carlos Rosario, but he has since earned himself a very good win and now looking to make it two straight and hand Dominic Valle the first setback of his professional career. Yeah, we're starting to see that pressure from Valle. He's starting to pay dividends as Rosario is just not able to keep up. Yeah, and he's getting hit on the end of the combinations too, where he's, he's getting, trying to get out of the way. Of the Ooh! Shot. He, that kind of got his edge in there. He's, he, he's trying to get away from the initial part of the combination, but it's just the combination keeps on coming and coming. Yeah, it's almost like Rosario thinks the combination's over and Valle's still punching. Yep, and, and, and Ooh. what happens is he, he gets away from it, but he puts himself out of position for the con continuous follow-up. Valle, two inches taller, two inch reach advantage. Rosario, there's that movement we talked about before. One thing about Rosario, he, there is good work being done by him. It's just it's becoming fewer and further between because Valle's consistency is getting, is becoming more and more direct. Yeah, and his size and, and, and physicality. Yeah. He's starting to push Rosario around. Good shot there for both men trading blows. Yeah, it's going to come to a point where Rosario's going to have to dig down. Oh! Good uppercut there by Valle now. It's going to come to a point where both guys, guys are going to have to dig down. Rosario's going to have to make a decision. Am I going to allow myself to be outworked here? Because I, I can hang with him skill-wise, but can I, do I, am I going to decide to make go to an uncomfortable place and try to punch with Valle to get him off me? Which is what you talked about, Paulie, that Ivan Calderon said to him after the setback in November of last year right here. Are you willing to go into the deep waters? Two division world champion, Ivan Calderon, the 2000 Olympian in the corner of Rosario. Mark Ferre with Dominic Valle. Nah, stop getting hit with all the cuts. All right, you hear me? You hear what I said? You hear what I said? You're too straight up. You're not fucking using your legs. Be on your toes, all right? Use your jab, all right? Hit the body. You're breaking him down. You got to be ready after. You got to give me an after. You're giving me your primary, but give me an after. Give me a head movement. Give me something. You understand? It's important. Here we see some action from round number two. Things are starting to really heat up. Here we see Marcus Vaillant some big shots, a lead uppercut, and then a right hand. Just like his corner was saying, you got to give me things on the end. And that's when, that's when he was having the most success. He was letting his hands go. When Rosario thought he was done, that's when the big shots were landing. Yeah, and that's the thing. Rosario may have slipped the first two or three shots, but again, he puts himself in a position where he Ooh. can't, he's got to keep defending, and eventually Vaillant was getting to him. Carlos Rosario in the blue and white, white, green, and purple for Don Dominic Valle, third straight undefeated fighter that Carlos Rosario is facing. Hey, Rosario's tricky, he's sneaky, he's landed some good shots in here and there, but nothing is deterring Valle. He's just walking through all the shots and letting his hands go like he likes to. We all would have loved to seen it back in January on the 26th of that month. We were looking forward to March 22nd, but it seems, Magic Man, Chris Algeria, it seems like this fight is worth the wait because they're both throwing tonight. Oh, yeah. I think these two would make a good fight no matter when it was. They, they, they just look like they, their styles match up really well. Oh, man, big heavy shots there from Valle. That effective aggression that we have seen over and over mm. from Dominic Valle, 
Watch your way out. Watch your way out. There you go. And, and you can see Rosario slowing down a bit here, looking for the, the, the clinches just to get a rest here and there. He's going to have to figure out more, more deceptive ways to look for a rest. As there, he lets his hands go a little bit on the inside, but now he's smothering himself as well. You, you know what it looks like, champ? It looks like Rosario is being forced to punch. He's not, like, ready to punch. He's, yeah. he's just, the pace is, is pushing yeah. him, and he's just letting his hands out there, yeah. not really throwing. And, and I can understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to look at a good, good counter there by Rosario. I can understand what he's trying to do. He's looking for ways to sort of slow down the pace deceptively of of uh, uh, Valle, but just to, just trying to clench or smother yourself isn't going to do it. You're going to have to maybe show different looks and then give a different target, change levels a little bit so that Valle has to stop and think for a second. And, Paula, he did show that different look for a moment. Southpaw stance for Rosario. Now, Chris, he's gone back to the orthodox stance. Yeah, I don't know if he actually chose to do that. I think that Valle was putting so much pressure, he just stepped back into that stance and had to punch while he was there. Ooh. One minute on the clock here in round number three. Both men fought on the same oh. card here back oh. in November of last year. The body shot to the gut there by, by Valle. That yeah. stopped that stopped Rosario in his tracks, and now he's holding. That right hand <laughs> uppercut. Yeah, that was a right uppercut to the gut, and I, I think Rosario felt it a little bit. We heard Mark Ferre in between rounds. Mm. He said, Dominic, you got to use your legs more. Chris, are you seeing that here in this round? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing that he's asking for that I haven't seen so much of is the jab, and I think that would really make a oh, difference because oh, nice you'd be able to again. keep the contact on him. Yeah, and I think if he cuts off the ring, I think Rosario may, may start to be on the verge of going because Rosario, the, Rosario, the only breaks Rosario is getting are when he's able to kind of just get, get away. Oh, man. Oh, Heavy shots from Valle. Another big body shot. Watch your way out. Thrown Watch by 22-year-old Dominic Valle. I think we're starting to see Rosario start to unravel. The pressure's really, really going on him. Outstanding round three for Valle. Well, it's starting to fly a little bit, guys. That means Paulie's gonna get his big old napkin, Chris, yeah. so he doesn't get any blood <laughs> yeah, he, on him. Even he just, if he is wearing all black tonight. Yeah, he just pulled out the curtain, covered himself up. <laughs> Puerto Rican showdown. The body, about the body, body shots shot. there, Valle. Valle trying to, uh, Rosario trying to fire back, but in between that, you saw the uppercut to the gut by Valle, and that, so you could see that got the attention of Rosario. He swayed it up against the ropes and looked for a chance to hold on, try to catch his breath. When you got a guy who's throwing consistent body shots the way that Valle is, that's really, really dangerous. He threw three hard body shots, all three landed. Rosario is very tough. Those are, those are some big shots. Rosario, born in Puerto Rico, now fighting out of Winter Haven, Florida. Dominic Valle, born in Rochester, New York. Fighting out of Tampa, Florida, training here at the Pro Box TV World Headquarters. Starts round four with a double jab. Yeah, that was a nice sharp jab he came out with. Ooh, and a nice ti nicely timed uppercut as Rosario ducked over. The Puerto Rican connection. Dominic and Marcus's father and father's parents. The father, Junior, grew up in Puerto Rico. Mom, Spring, grew up here in the United States. Round four, and again, body work from Valle. Oh, nice sharp left uppercut there, too. You know, Rosario's got the Puerto Rican connection there as well, you know. Yep. With Valle Ivan Calderon in the corner, the world champion. Born in Puerto Rico. He's come over here the last few years. But if you get a guy like Ivan Calderon to believe in you, you know that you have a chance to be something special. But Ivan can't get into the ring with you, Paulie. He's got to yeah. do it himself. And he's going to have to show the craftiness. And the good little right hand he threw there, but he's going to have to show the craftiness of what that Ivan used to show during his career. Valle doing a really good job of putting a lot of pressure, cutting yeah. off the ring very yeah. nicely. Now he's cutting off the ring nicely, yeah, absolutely. And again, catching on the end, Rosario trying to escape and getting caught as he's escaping, putting himself out of position because he's in such a panic to escape the danger. There's that quick snapping jab again from Dominic. Oh, good timing on that right hand. Head off line, Watch beautiful right shot. And you know what, Mark Frey just told him bluntly, oh, good right hand as well. He's finding the target with some yeah. good shot selection. Mark Frey told him bluntly a couple of rounds ago, yo, man, stop getting hit with the uppercut. And you know what? <laughs> and he hasn't I don't been think hit he hasn't got hit with the uppercut anymore. Nope, not since then. Little southpaw again for Rosario. Yeah, he's trying anything at this point. He's getting outworked and beat up in there. Yeah. And again, it's not for a lack of quality. It's just he just can't keep up with the pace. Valle is drowning him. 
I've, right I've seen the Valle Brothers train in the That's gym. Right. I mean, they are workhorses. Yes. They really put in the work. And you're seeing that now from Dominic with how much output, how much volume he's putting. He hasn't slowed down at all. Yeah, and you know what you can see there in that combination. Mm. That last combination, Rosario, the arms are just weary. He's arm weary, even throwing the combination. Valle is still with some good thought on his shots. Which is compounding the problem because now he cannot keep Dominic off of him. Yep. You got a guy, now you're arm weary, you're not punching as hard. You got a guy who doesn't mind getting hit by you now, who's letting yes. his hands go and landing bigger and bigger shots. Yep. And Return he, right hand hard. caught the chin Ooh. of Dominic Valle, but again, Valle throwing with bad intention. 30 seconds on the clock, round four. Paulie, I'm sure you can, you can speak, knowing exactly what I'm speaking about. You can feel a guy's energy when you're in the ring. Yeah. He, those punches start coming off slower yeah. and slower, right. weaker and weaker. Yep. And, and, and with the other way around, when he's stronger, you're yeah. not, you, know, exactly. you can feel his energy there as well, and his body language and his physicality, and, and Valle is showing just that. Mm. Oh, good body shot. Left hook to the liver. Dominic Valle in his last fight back in November went the six round distance for the first time as a professional. You, We're headed to round number five. I tell you, man, when I saw this matchup, I, I was one, you know, I was really wondering if Valle was going to be able to handle it. Very impressive performance by Dominic Valle, man. Very impressive performance. I mean, living up to the hype that 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 comes with uh, being the kind of prospect he is. Yeah, I would say he's he's handling it with flying colors. Here we see him ripping that lead uppercut, followed by a straight right hand. It's just more and more pressure, 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 cutting off the ring, just smothering, like you said, drowning Rosario as the rounds wear on. You understand me? You were leaping Be on your toes. You were leaping in with that, with that, that ugly right, okay? I want okay. to see that. Stay smart. Stay, 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 on, stay on the jab. Stay on the jab. Stay on control. If, if you give me any type of technique right now, yep. listen to me, no power. Any type of technique, touch, 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 shoot the right hand. That's, the body. That's all I need. I need something 70%. I need 100. Up. You understand me? Nothing 100. See, Mark Freddy wants nothing 100. What that's going to do is accelerate the punch output. If you're not putting 100% of the power on the shots, it's going to just make it rain punches instead. Even at 70%, you got a guy who's almost on his way out. It's going to start to affect him even psychologically because the pressure won't stop. That's also going to help Valle because he's not going to be off balance. If you're not throwing those, overthrowing those shots, you're going to be right in position to keep throwing. Yeah, like and, that. and it's going to make Rosario just feel like he can't get away from anything because the output is going to increase even more. Round number five. Good counter. Marcus Valle, one year, nine months, 13 days older than younger brother Dominic, who has looked very, very good tonight. And you talked about the work ethic. That comes from Junior. That comes from their dad saying, hey, you can't take any shortcuts, Chris. And Dominic and Marcus don't take shortcuts. So you think about a long layoff with a Valle brother, and you worry a little bit less about ring rust. Yeah, I mean, when you're when you're staying in the gym and you're and you're staying fit, you know, you don't have to kill yourself to make weight. Like he's big for the weight class. Obviously, he's been working. So I mean, and when you have a conditioning and endurance like this, you're obviously not, you know, you're obviously staying in the gym and not worried about the weight. And yeah, look at him. He's presenting himself as a physical presence constantly in front of his eyes. That's stressing. That's also mental stress there. And they have the attitude, and it, it's truly the case tonight. Every fight is a step up, a new challenge, a new puzzle. Dominic has told us in the past that he has to figure out. And man, he is putting this puzzle together perfectly this evening. Yeah, Rosario's not putting up much of a fight anymore. He's really just surviving, moving around the ring. And you can see the, 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 you, body, the energy of Valle coming up. steps over to his right and just prevents Rosario from finding that escape to the left every time. Oh. He might be able to get him out of here, man, I'm telling you. Rosario is only surviving because he's able to escape to the left consistently enough while still taking a beating. Body, body, head. If Rosario is not able to get out to the left, he's, he's, he's going to have even more trouble fighting to his right because you can see he's not comfortable, that's comfortable fighting going to his right, and he's going to be able to defend himself even less nope. going that way. I got you. Free. A little blood you. under the eye of Valle. He has a small abrasion, a little bit of swelling. Another body shot. We started out this fight, you know, praising the body shoot, body shots of, of Rosario, but I mean, Valle has really, really turned up the body punching. Hey, Rosario had a good game plan. Right in the, right in the first round, you knew what he, you could tell what he wanted to do. He had a good strategy, but Valle has just completely overwhelmed yeah, him. And you, and you see the arm weariness in that last combination. Really, nothing left on, on the shots. Oh, oh, again, right to the midsection. Let him go. Let him go. Of the Puerto Rican Carlos Rosario. Yeah, while Valle's body shots, you can actually hear the thud. Yeah. 
agree with you, champ. If he steps over, he'll definitely be able to block that little bit of reprieve that Rosario gets. But I do say, I will say that Dominic is doing a great job of throwing to where Rosario is going to go with those body shots. He steps to his left, he hits him with the right hand. He steps to his right, he hits him with the left hook. Headed to the sixth and final round. Long walk back to the corner yeah, for Rosario. And he didn't look, the body language wasn't great either. No. Okay. Tiene que darlo todo. Él viene a tirarlo también. Oye, caballo. Oye, cámbiame esas manos ahora. No me cambies esas manos, me tira ahora. Me tira ahora. Tell me, Carlos, you gotta leave it all. Red point, blue point. Three minutes, three minutes in this super featherweight matchup. Dominic Valle, white, green, and purple trunks, blue and white trunks for Carlos Rosario. Mike Goldberg, former world champion, Chris Algieri, former two-time world champion, the magic man, Paulie Malinaji, here on a Wednesday night on your boxing Ooh. channel, Pro Box TV. And big right hand a few seconds ago landed by Valle. And you see Ivan Calderon in the corner was telling uh, was telling Rosario all or nothing now. He said he, he got nothing, there's nothing else to say before. You're going to either go for it at all, for everything or you're going to have nothing at the end of this fight. Coach is being honest with his charge. That's that's I, I like hearing that. It's refreshing instead of just lying to your guy and just go out. Hey, you got it out there. You're doing good. And Not you, know what? you can say that, Chris, about both corners tonight because Mark Foray tells his fighters what they need to hear, not what they want to hear as well. Hey, then credit to Dominic. He's he's listened and he, yeah. he's executed. He hasn't got hit with that uppercut again since, since the second round. He started jabbing again. He's cutting off the ring. Nice flowing left hand to a double jab, turned it into a left hook at the end as well. Awful, right oh, off. Oh, uh, there's the uppercut thrown by Dominic, which is why Marcus said to us, Paulie, many times, hey, you can't be a good teacher if you don't have good students. And he says the template is Marcus and Dominic Valle Rosario's doing what Ivan Calderon said, though. He's trying to empty everything out here in the final three minutes. On paper, this was a very competitive fight. In reality, it is not. Yeah. I mean, on paper, I, I thought it was like 50-50, man. Yeah, we were talking about this, like this is good. This could be the fight of the night. And I mean, Dominic Valle is just, just on another level. Sometimes time away from live fire, Pauly, works to your advantage. I tell you, it shows the quality of Dominic Valle. I'm telling you, because Rosario is a 6-1 mm -hmm. record, and he's not 6-1 at just with cupcakes. Be a pretty, no, beat no, some pretty no, good fighters no, in that 6-1 yes. record. And it's one loss was a competitive loss for another undefeated guy. Like Rosario has, has been fighting good opposition and earned his six and one record. I like the I, I like the adjustment that Dominic made this round. And he, he was just he was winning it on pressure. Now he's coming out and he's loading up on big single shots, looking to really put some hurt on him. And it's working because Rosario's legs got a little got a little shaky there when he got hit with one of the big right hands. Yeah, he's uh, trying to finish the show, champ. Yeah, I, I, I like I like the ang the uh, the angle that. Dominic is doing to try and change his fight up and get the guy out of there. Dominic finished his first Oof. four opponents. This is close to being stopped. All in under four rounds. 30 seconds on the clock here. Sixth and final round. I wouldn't argue a stoppage here at all. He's getting hit with some big shots. Baez coming on. I give you the, I give Rosario credit for trying to get to the end, man. He's trying to get to the end, trying to smother. Trying to at least take some of the sting off some of the shots by riding with some of them, man. But He's taking he's taking a beating here. This is these are some real big shots from a big strong kid in front of him, and the pressure has not let up since round number two. And look at this. Oh, that was a huge shot. Oh, he's hurt. Great very very hurt. Finish. It is all over. Dominic with the finish with heard, just seconds left. I heard the bell, guys. I don't know what they're gonna call it. I don't know if it's a stoppage or a decision. I literally heard the bell as the ref jumped in. I don't know what it's gonna be here. Oh, no, I don't think he stopped it. I think I think I think he it was because of the bell. Oh, but he but he held him and he like did a he waved did it off. So uh, I don't know, man. But right, I, literally as he got in there, the bell rang, and then the, it, they stopped ringing the bell, thinking maybe the referee stopped it. But I mean, you gotta keep ringing the bell if you rang it. The round's <laughs> over. The round's over. I don't know which one is.
it's going to be, but either way, a, a very masterful performance by uh, Dominic Valle. Very, very impressive. Dominant win against a very tough opponent. Huge, good, I mean, big step up for Dominic Valle. Big, biggest, uh, biggest. Mark Mar 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 telling me TKO. I don't know how that's a TKO. Yeah. I, uh, that's the first, first it's in my be, life. But <laughs> what, do you, what is it? TKO at the end of six rounds of yeah, a six round? A TKO 603. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Round six and three seconds. Real time replay. But yeah, let's check it out, guys. T TKO at 259 of the sixth. You see what I'm oh, wow. Actually, I, 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 I would have to see, hear that again. I mean, that was... Wow. If it's basketball, the shot counts. If it's hockey, the puck wasn't in the net. Uh, yeah. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna find out right like, now. I feel like the referee decided before the bell that he was going to stop right. it, but at this, the instant it took him to get in there, the bell rang. Let's take a listen. Listen. He's deciding. Yep. The bell hasn't rang. You can see the instant the ref makes a decision. I mean, it's only another split second before right. he jumps in. But the instant he decides to stop it, you can see his body language. It's no bell. And then as he's jumping in, the bell rings. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Paulie. I think I think his, his decision to stop the fight happened before the round ended, but his body got in there after the bell. Yeah, because it was literally a split second yeah. from the bell. And here's the reaction from the from the fight. I mean, a good first round by Rosario, actually. Landed some good uppercuts, boxed well uh, in a crafty way. But, he, you know, he, it wasn't enough to confuse Valle. Valle just started picking up the pace more and more. And Rosario wasn't able to be crafty enough like his trainer used to be. Like I said, you know, who used to, you know, dazzle uh, the pressure fighters and and and. and and, and, and beat them on points. Um, Rosario sort of out of answers with the, with the pressure of Valle, and it started to become a beating, like you said, Jim. Yeah, I mean, the craftiness from, from Rosario turned from offense to just trying to survive. He was being crafty in order to you know, get to the end. He was taking big shots. He's a super, super tough kid, definitely. But listen, like you said, you can be crafty, but people say all the time, like, oh, you and I both weren't punchers when we fought, but you gotta hit hard enough to yeah. get respect. Yeah. And yeah. Rosario wasn't able and, to do that. And you gotta also give it enough looks. Uh, you yes. gotta give enough looks to buy your time so that you get just enough breaks to, to set up your own. You got to control the pace. And any good referee will tell you that there is no clock in their mind. Of right. course. Right? That's up to the commission to decide what, they, what the stoppage is. From, from me looking at it, I don't think it's a stoppage, but whatever. I mean, it's, it was a great performance either way. All right, let's get an official decision. Find out if it is a unanimous decision win or a TKO. Here's Mark. I think, I think Mark said it's a knockout. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Christopher Young stops this contest at 2 minutes 59 seconds of the sixth round. Your winner by technical knockout, El Ganador por Knockout Tecnico, and still undefeated, Dominic Valle! I said 2.59. And Goldie, it's got to be a 2.59 because at three minutes the fight's over. So <laughs> you're going to declare it a TKO, you have to say it's a 2.59. At 3.01 of round number six. <laughs> so he moves to 6-0 and with five finishes. Congratulations, Dominic Valle. Coming up next, our co-main event of the evening, 19-year-old Oscar Alvarez Jr. 9-0, seven wins by knockout. Fought back here inside the Pro Box TV Event Center, his United States debut in January against 23-1. Nicholas Polanco got the win, earned another win in March of this year. His opponent is the Brazilian fighting out of Sao Paulo. He is Maximus. Jonathan Cardoso, third straight fight on Pro Box TV, third career fight here in the U.S. Cardoso and Alvarez Jr. They are in our co-main event of the evening. Both very young men, 19-year-old Oscar Alvarez Jr. will celebrate his 20th birthday July 13th and Cardoso just 24 years old. All right, we started it out in style. Dominic Valle, I would say, Paulie, that's the best Dominic Valle we have seen, and we've seen a lot of the Valle brothers here at Pro Box TV. Absolutely, the best Dominic Valle, and not just because of such a good performance, poised, mature, terrific shot selection, smart, uh, a great offense, protected himself well, considering he was just bringing a lot of offense, a lot of heat, and also the, the caliber of opponent as well really has to count the way he was able to really dismantle a very, very good prospect. All right, before we really break down our next fight, which is a lightweight fight, 
let's visit one of our talk shows, one of the presentations in which the subject was, who is the man in the lightweight division? Welcome to Who's the Man? We are talking the top fighters in the lightweight division, and we've got the champs with me. As always, I'm your host, George Jakovic. Guess who's number one for Chris Algieri? Yeah, as high as I am on Javante Davis, I'm that much higher on, on Shakur Stevenson. I just think that he is the man. He is the truth. He's going to be the man for a very long time. I think he's going to be the man at 135 and when at 140 and then eventually at 147. I don't think we're going to see the best out of him until he gets to 140, similar to like a like a Floyd Mayweather rest type career where once he gets once he's asked he has to fight guys that are either his size or bigger than him he's really going to show how special he truly is well, get your cameras ready guess who paulie has at number one everybody take note paulie malinaji has devin haney as his number one lightweight on his who's the man list i, I just analyzed it stylistically and and, and, and haney stylistically with javante stylistically was it, it made me think that you know like i, I yeah, it, it, it matches up in a way that you could i can see it i can see the route to how haney could win that fight i'm not saying it will but it could and again uh, if, we, if i'm judging my who's the man list based on how chris judged it which is who would kick whose ass for me of course stevenson will kick everybody's ass the man here on the set of us three both these two they share they share co-honors chris algeri the magic man paulie malinaji mike Govergaard, lightweight division you talk about someone who many believe could be the man in maybe four or five years it is oscar alvarez jr and paulie Maybe his biggest supporter is Juan Manuel Marquez, the Hall of Famer who's part of our Pro Box TV team. Yeah, yeah, but you know, Oscar Alvarez has some flaws himself. You know, he's a fun fighter to watch. Tall, big, reminds you a little bit of Fandora. And we know what, we saw what Fandora's flaws cost him as well. Right. So, you know, uh, Alvarez has some similar qualities to Fandora, especially his physical stature. Very, very tall, 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 lightweight. I mean, just a giant. And he's fighting a guy who's a good puncher, Jonathan Cardoso, who's himself been a bit chinny and his one loss, we saw he get stopped here on Pro Box TV, but I mean, he's got all knockout wins, I think, right? Or, or, or well, well, but 15 one, so, wins, yeah. so, 14 so, knockouts. So you, you don't want to be getting hit the way uh, uh, Oscar uh, um, uh, Alvarez gets hit in in the way we've seen him get hit in some of these fights. Oh, you mentioned Fandor and how they have similar qualities. They have similar positive qualities and negative qualities. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. lack of defense is, is there. And for tall guys like that, Thomas Hearns, you know, the, the legs can go and they get hit with good shots on the chin. And you were just in Detroit, you know, looking at those great go. guys like the, the Motor Hitman, City Cobra. The Motor City Cobra and, of course, Crunk Boxing and Tommy the Hitman Hearns. Cardoso has said that in that knockout, which you and I called, Paulie, he was in Panama fighting Juan Huertas, that he did get nervous before the fight, that there were some butterflies, and he got caught, and he owns it. He owns it, he has come back, he looked good in January, here against a 10-0 opponent, and won a unanimous decision, and now he wants to add the first loss to Oscar Alvarez Jr.'s ledger. Oscar Alvarez Jr., as I mentioned, 9 and 0 oh, with seven knockouts. I want to talk about Cardoso with you, Chris, because the power that he possesses doesn't really match the frame but yet he's able to knock out his opponents. Why? He's very explosive. So he's, he's got he's got good explosion. He's, he puts a lot of pressure. I think, actually, this is a great matchup for him. I think uh, with, with some of the, the, the defensive flaws that the champ Paul and I spoke about, about Alvarez, I think Cardoza can really take advantage of that. And he has enough power to get respect, do some damage. Let's see. Alvarez has all that amateur experience. Let's see how good that chin is with, with little gloves on and no headgear. Cardoso wants to be the next great boxer from Brazil. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? There hasn't been a great one since Asselino Freitas, but he wants to be that and, and kind of following that footstep in those footsteps in that same mold. Freitas was also known as a big puncher. I tell you what, another reason Cardozo hits hard, he's got a long frame. You're not going to notice it tonight because Larry uh, uh, Alvarez, Oscar yeah. Larry, uh, Oscar Larry, imagine I'm going back way back. <laughs> Oscar Alvarez is a giant, but uh, for the weight class, but, but, but uh, you know, Cardozo himself has a, a frame that's kind of long and can, is able to generate power. Another, one thing I'm, I'm curious about though, is he going to be able to generate the kind of 
power punching up at a taller guy. When you, because usually guys like Cardoso, they generate power. They're stringy. They generate power, but they're also usually punching down or at least eye level. And another thing to keep in mind with that. And we saw Cardoso this week working very hard to make weight. So I'm wondering yeah. how that's going to put. You know, it could be a, it could be an asset. It means he could put on some weight, be very very strong in the ring tight, or it could sap his endurance some. So we got to see how that's going to play out as well. Coming off the first time going the distance, Jonathan Cardoso. One another guy he said he'd like to follow in the footsteps of his Patrick Teixeira, the southpaw, 32 and 4, 23 knockouts, stopped just once, held That's the right. WBO light middleweight title Actually. from 2019 to 21. Yeah, I forgot about Teixeira. You know, he, yeah, he, didn't, he didn't make the big name that Freitas made, but, you know, Teixeira had a world championship and, um, you know, was a world-class guy. And beat a top contender for that title against Carlos Adames, who yeah. now is still, is still yeah. doing very, and very who, well. who took it from Castaño? Did he lose to Castaño? Um, I believe so, yes. Yeah. Argentina versus Brazil. That's the rivalry. Hey, and, and then Glover, <laughs> and then Glover <laughs> Teixeira in MMA became one of the oldest champions in UFC history. So Teixeira is a big name in Brazil. Cardoso wants to be the big man in tonight's fight. When we next see you, it will be, as promised, two Wednesdays from tonight. Wednesday, June 28th, live from Sinaloa, Mexico. Main event, 10 round super lightweight matchup between Sinaloa Zone, Pedro Guevara, 39 wins, 22 of those by knockout. His opponent is from the Yucatan, Miguel Herrera. Also a bantamweight showcase featuring 22-year-old unbeaten Sebastian Hernandez and another hometown favorite in Nazario Castro, who is riding a nine-fight unbeaten streak. Join us for all the action in two weeks right here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. All right, fighters getting set to enter the ring here at our world headquarters. And as we expected in the first matchup, we expect this to be a great battle in our co-main event. But 6-3 against 5-10, it's interesting that you guys have already broken that down, Chris. It is a challenge for both sides. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you got to deal with the power punching and the experience of, of uh, Cardoso if you're if you're Alvarez. And then, and then if you're Cardoso dealing with Alvarez, you got to think, listen, like Paulie said, punching up is different than punching punching down. Cordoso is used to punching down, being tall for the weight class. Now he's fighting a guy who's, I hate to say it, freakishly tall, so he's, he's now at a disadvantage. I'm sure he's never fought someone with this kind of height. Paulie, you know, every time the lights go down here in the city, I just want to be Steve Perry. You know? <laughs> I just want to go on the journey with you guys, you know? Yeah. We're about to go on this journey now, man. <laughs> These two guys are about to light it up in there. That was kick saving a beauty, right? Yeah. <laughs> when the lights go down in the city. Jonathan Cardoso, Oscar Alvarez Jr. <laughs> Representing Sao Paulo, Brazil, Cardoso. Fighting out of Sonora, Mexico, Alvarez Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for eight rounds in the lightweight division. Esta pelea está pautada a ocho asaltos en el peso negro. Los jueces, your judges, Michael Ross, Brian Gary, and Shami Shipman. Your referee in charge, el arbitro, is Michael De Jesus. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black with red. In La Esquina Azul, con pantalones negro y rojo, pesando 133 libras, weighing in at 133 pounds, with a record 15 wins, just one loss, 14 wins by knockout, con record 15 victorias, una derrota, con 14 por la vía del knockout, de Sao Paulo, Brazil, Jonathan Maximus and fighting out of the red corner wearing the white with pink 
en la esquina rojo con pantalones blanco y rosa. Pesando 131.6 libras, weighing in at 131.6 pounds, with a record nine wins, no losses, seven wins by knockout, con record nueve victorias, cero derrotas, con siete por la vía del knockout, de Ciudad Obregón, Sonora, México, Oscar. La ley de todo en el lago y en el rincón. Toca guantes si quieren, si no, y te va atrás. Michael De Jesus, our referee, our co-main event, scheduled for eight rounds in the lightweight division. Our tail of the tape, 19-year-old Oscar Alvarez Jr. against the 24-year-old Brazilian Jonathan Cardoso. Here we go. It's time to fight. White and pink trunks for Alvarez Jr. Black and red for Jonathan Cardoso. Paulie, in our opening bout, you said that both guys thought that they were the A side. That's very much the same in yeah. this bout. And so far, the two good jabs landed by Cardoso. Again, the, the, you're going to notice Alvarez is very, very hittable, and I don't think he can, he's going to be able to afford that tonight to, to keep on being that hittable. But of course, offensively, he's a busy guy. Cardoso has faced some high-level opponents oh, big in his hand. last three fights. A 10-0 fighter. He was finished by 15-3-1. Juan Huertes. And prior to that, finished Christian Palma, who had 31 victories in his professional career. Maximus trying to work the body. I like how Cardoso has really put a committing jab in there and has landed a few times, kind of, kind of putting uh, Alvarez on the back step when he when he throws it, and, and it's caused him to also land a couple of right hands. Yeah, you spoke about how hittable Alvarez is. I think that Cardoso's landed more than he's missed. Never a good sign. Biggest fight to date for ooh, Oscar ooh, oh. Alvarez Jr. And there you see the aggressiveness of Cardoso. And putting, uh, Alvarez putting himself defensively out of position as well. At the wrong distance. Yeah. I mean, I, I hate to say it, the more I, 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 I watch Alvarez, every time I watch him, I might have said this last time, the, the more I doubt the amount of amateur fights he claims I've had. Yeah. Because he makes too many amateurish, I guess. It's almost a disrespect to call them amateurish, because they're a Ooh. Oh, great shot there by Cardoso. Just as I say that. Pain, he's paying defensively. Well, we said 15 wins, 14 by knockout. Cardoso's eyes are wi wide open with the opportunity that he's presenting right now. Can Maximus finish it right here, right now? Alvarez doing what he does, fighting back. Yep. Throwing big shots in between, and he is very busy, like you said. Again. Oh, big oh. connection with the right. Oh. That's what I mean about the errors, standing up straight and squared on the ropes. I mean, you got 7,000 amateur fights like he claims. <laughs> I mean, why, why are you standing up straight that high on the ropes Cardoso, and squared? Cardoso put in some good body shots there, too. That was very smart. Somebody's cut because there's a lot on the shoulder of, of I believe it's Cardoso's nose, actually. Oh. Long punches landing for Cardoso. Cardoso doing a good job of staying close, too. Yeah, good balance, stepping in, yeah, and staying within range. And that's a great point, champ, because when he steps in, he steps in hard, hard, that power jab. Mm -hmm. ah! Wow, great job weathering the storm by 19-year-old Oscar Alvarez Jr. Huge opening round for Cardozo. Here we see that step in jab, like you were saying, champ, and a big overhand right as Alvarez is tall along the ropes, making again those amateurish quote unquote mistakes. And Cardozo jumped all over him, landed big right hands, had him in a world of trouble. And as if he didn't pay for that day with the knockdown, he did, did it again. Like, yep. like, 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 Two more times, actually. Got hit with body shots in this corner, and then that's it. Got hit with another right hand on the opposite side. On, on the opposite side. Yep. His father in his corner. Knockdown scored by the Brazilian Jonathan Cardoso in round number one, scheduled for eight.
This is round two, black and red trunks for Sao Paulo, Brazil's 15 and one, Jonathan Cardoso. Pink and white for nine and oh, 19 year old, Oscar Alvarez Jr. Oof. And in, 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 in sharp contrast, Cardozo doing the opposite, being very fundamentally sound and keeping it simple. Yeah, and getting his weight on the shots. Alvarez kind of looks like he's flailing all over the place when he throws the punches. He can outwork you and be busy, and we've seen him do that, but again, he's not getting the weight on the shots the way Cardozo gets them. Cardozo keeping his hands in good position, stepping in with hard power jabs, and when the opportunity presents itself, letting that right hand go. And Cardozo told us, Paulie, about when he got finished very quickly in the first round of Panama, that he did come out too aggressive. He was nervous walking in, and then he came out way too aggressively, and he paid the price. So let's see if he stays disciplined with his aggression here. Moments ago, Alvarez landed a nice sweeping left hook that seemed to have had an effect oh. on Cardozo, but Cardozo comes right back getting Alvarez tall on the ropes. Cardoso changing levels nicely, Chris. Yeah, I like that straight right hand down low. I mean, when you got a guy who's as tall as, as Alvarez is, you have that long body, that long torso. You can see the red blotchiness now over the left side of Alvarez from those straight right hands. The right hand there around the side there by Alvarez. He's going to need more of those. You know, the corner was, was screaming for the jab, but that's not something we've ever really seen used consistently. Oh, Beautiful oh, counter. Big counter. Yeah. That right hand is on point tonight for Jonathan Cardoso. I mean, he's, he's, he fell in face first with yep. that one. I mean, he was asking for it there. And Paulie does not believe that Alvarez has 677 I don't even think amateur he, fights. Oh, I don't even think he has 77 amateur fights. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll, be fl I'll be frank with you. The mistakes he makes are just too blunt and then too oh. oh, he got caught again. It's one thing about guys with a lot of amateur experience. I always see their eyes. They're always so aware. They're always just making you miss. I don't see that from Alvarez. He's getting hit way too cleanly nah, nah. and way too often. And he's very, very young. So if you would have had that, that amateur experience through those years, I, I just think you'd see more wear and tear as well. I remember uh, being at the PAL Nationals in 2000 and seeing a 15-year-old kid with 200 amateur fights. He looked what there was like there was a lot of wear and tear on him. Right. Oh, good left hook there from Oh. oh. Well, we had Jeez. a finish in our first fight at 2.59 of the sixth and final round. Cardoso has been the aggressor so far in this fight and landed frequently. Uh, hey, what, Alvarez Cardoso just stepped in with a super hard jab right there. I mean, I've never seen punches land so clean. Yeah, I mean, Alvarez never complains. I'll tell you what, he's got, he's got character of a fighter, but yeah. he's, he's, he's just so much, to, he has, so much he has to work on. Oof. Well, he's in for a tough night with Cardoso. Cardoso is bloodied up a little bit. And it seems like he can't get the respect for Cardoso either because he's landing the shot. Obviously, Cardoso's bleeding, but not respecting Alvarez at all. Yeah, but you can see wise. Cardoso see such a great opportunity here. Oh, I mean, that was huge over here. Right, right, right into with it. a body shot from six miles away. And of course, you know, he walked into the right hand and said, watch, look how far he's going to throw that body shot. Yep. I mean, Cardoso's already set to catch and shoot right from there. Yeah, we're saying about the fundamentals of Cardoso. He's found himself in very good balance, setting his ground, letting his hands go. And like you said, getting a lot of power on his punches tonight. <laughs> Su pelea es esa ahora y el próximo round. No busquen loca, tira puño. Bien, ok. All right, telling uh, Cardozo, it's your fight, continue this in the next round. While uh, the, the, the corner of Alba is asking for combinations. Yeah, I, I don't. What about just don't stay high on the ropes? <laughs> First of all, <laughs> whatever you do, don't give, make yourself that big of a target when you get on the ropes. Alvarez Jr., extremely fast, hits super hard, but but here's the phrase that Pauly has, has kind of accentuated throughout the night. His defense is still evolving, and we see examples of that so far in this fight tonight. And there's that length being utilized. 6-3, Oscar Alvarez Jr., 5-10, Jonathan Cardoso. Let him go! Whoa, suéltalo! Suéltalo! I mean, as clean as Alvarez has been hit, I mean, he does show a sturdy chin. Oof, man. Hard, hard jab from Cardoza. Cardozo. Oh, wow! 
I mean, he's just no sense of radar on this guy. It's like, like, <laughs> you know, you have like a natural radar depending on where your opponent winds up, the kind of punches he can throw at you from the angle that he winds up at. I mean, uh, Alvarez is running face first into these shots. Cardoso. Oh, there's the cut. For a, a power but, puncher but, but, with 14 career knockouts, is patient ooh, waiting for those big shots. Counter. Again, catch and shoot. I mean, that one's been automatic. It's, it's, oh, 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 that one hurts. Big left hook. Big left hook. And the right. Looking to finish it right here, right oh. now. Jonathan Cardoso. It doesn't hold. It doesn't hold. Dude. Again, no instincts of even survival. Continues to fire back with his yeah. chin way up in the air. Yeah. Couple more big shots and this is over. Michael Carter, they're throwing, right the corner. Right they're throwing the towel in. Right Rep in the doesn't see it. It is all over. Jonathan Cardoso finishes Oscar Alvarez Jr. Statement. Statement one for Cardoso. Cardoso is back body. in the mix. Now I'm good. I think. Goldie, how about you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> they were right above us. Hit your paperwork, though. Got your paperwork. This is nothing compared to bare knuckle, Paul. No, I know. I know. At least in BYB, in England, we're farther away from them. That is true. On. That is true. It's become the, the long flight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the exchange, and then the end, and it was that left hook that rocked. Yeah, I mean, he'd been hit with so many right hands and actually was surviving them. There we saw the cl a small clash of heads, which, which Open made a, th a third, a th cut third fight in a row for Alvarez. And then See, bang, it was that. That catch and shoot was she automatic. Was beautiful. That I thing think, was right he, off. He kept throwing that same wide, ridiculous body shot from miles away. And, and, and literally every time he threw it, Cardoso would catch and shoot it. And it was the left hook that really had Alvarez in trouble. Oh, I mean, he was taking the right hands, but that left hook really hurt him. Oh. Huge right hand again. And at this point, the corner is already waving for the fight to be called off. The ref is on the other side, doesn't see it. And the, you said, heart of a fighter, yeah, but arguing he, it. He but himself, how many times did he throw that body shot from six miles away? And every single time he threw it, Cardoso caught him and shot it yep. with a right hand. Every single time. No and, so, and not only no adjustment, not even a thought to say, like, yeah, it's happening every time. Like, uh, you know, there's no way the guy has 700 amateur fights. No shot. There's, the, you, I'll bet you all kinds of farmland. Right. He doesn't have 600 yeah. amateur fights, so 700 amateur fights. Quarter the quarter yeah. of the fight. I no way this kid has 7,000 amateur fights. Yeah. 7,000. <laughs> <laughs> He's only got 6,000. <laughs> so, also what we have seen since that odd night in the finish early in Panama is the real Jonathan Cardoso yeah. start to come out. Yeah. He went the distance in a dominant performance yes. last time. Tonight we saw the guy he just that took, we thought we were going to see in Panama. He just took an O with a stoppage. Yes. And he continues a, a, a big knockout record. He adds to that. He's gone. The, he's only gone the distance once in his, uh, well, uh, in one of his wins. Right. His loss obviously didn't go the distance either, but that was the other way around. But he was dominant in that in that decision win and, and yeah. against an undefeated oh, yeah. fighter. So yeah. he's taken another was, O. And that was coming off the KO loss. Correct. So you know yep. what? He had yep. to, that was a confidence builder. He's a man on a mission. To make it official. Let's get it to Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to a halt at 1 minute 56 seconds of the third round. Your winner by technical knockout, El Ganador por Knockout Tecnico, Jonathan Maximus Cardoso.
Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for two great fights already tonight. Thank you for being here on a Wednesday night here at ProBox TV's Event Center, our world headquarters. One thing that we do know, it is a sport here inside our ProBox TV ring, but without the men and women who sacrifice, put their lives on the line every day we do not live in this country in freedom, and freedom is not free. So we have a special set of presentations here tonight before our main event of the evening. ProBox TV wishes to thank all the veterans, active duty and reserve service members, Gold Star mothers and fathers, and all of their families, those who work tirelessly for them. Each person who has ever worn the uniform took a solemn oath their first day of service to never leave a fellow brother or sister of arms behind. And there are many among us who knows that for many veterans, the battlefields they left behind, their fight still continues to this day. ProBox TV wishes to honor three such groups that were created to look after these veterans long after their return home. We at ProBox TV vow to help fight the fight to end veteran homelessness with our community partner. New beginnings for veterans by donating a 50-bed shelter for both male and female veterans still struggling today. This just for one round in our assistance. So ProBox TV would like to make a contribution and give them a big round of applause to Navy veteran Mike O'Dell and the Hillsborough County Veterans Helping Veterans. The check presentation from our world champion, Chris Algieri. Michael Dell, thank you. You guys keep us safe, and we are here to help. We are partners. Freedom, as we said, is not free. Thank you very much. We're honored to have you here tonight. Big round of applause for Navy veteran Michael Dell and the Hillsborough County Veterans Helping Veterans. All right, for the past decade, the mentors for Hillsborough County veterans have helped thousands of men and women in the Veterans Treatment Court through their various life struggles. ProBox TV wishes to honor these mentors with a donation to retired Army Colonel Jim Fletcher, a senior mentor and president of the Vietnam Veterans of America's local chapter, Army Colonel Jim Fletcher. Another big round of applause for a great organization and led by retired Army Colonel, Mr. Jim Fletcher. And last but certainly not least, there are those Marines that exemplify their motto of Semper Fi, to always remain faithful. After returning home from Vietnam, Marine Corps veteran Ron Zaleski made a conscious decision to never wear shoes again in protest of the war. Today, the Marine still walks everywhere barefoot while directing the long walk home, training a corps of mentors to both recognize and talk and help those other veterans who are thinking about suicide. While Ron Zaleski could not be here tonight, ProBox TV wishes to extend our deepest gratitude to him and to his team for bringing the fight home and bringing into focus the struggles that many veterans still face today.
Here to accept the donation is Marine Corps Major and Marines for Life Tampa Bay Representative Dwayne Stamp. Ron Manuel Marquez, Paulie Molinaji, two of our ProBox TV founders. But everyone joining us tonight, veterans from the Army, Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps, you continue to fight for our brothers and sisters in arms. Ladies and gentlemen of our country's armed service, we at ProBox salute you, and we always will. We wish to thank you, each and every one of you, every single day. God bless and thank you for allowing us to live here in the United States in freedom. A big round of applause. Thank you very much. We will work our way towards our main event of the evening in just a moment. But again, thank you to each and every one of you. It's an absolute honor to be here tonight. most anticipated fights in history has begun its promotional tour as Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. met up in Los Angeles to promote their super fight at welterweight. To Sorry, is it too late? Is it still as good of a fight as it would have been a couple of years ago? Is it just at the right time? Has Terrence Crawford grown into the welterweight division enough to now be a viable threat even to the bigger man that is Errol Spence? Uh, is Errol Spence's naturally bigger physical size uh, enough to uh, overthrow the more versatility uh, of, the, of the boxing style that Terrence Crawford has, that he fights out of both stances and is probably the slicker fighter. Will the body punching of Spence affect the slickness of Crawford? A lot of things up in the air here. Uh, it's a fight that a lot of people are talking about. The press conference, uh, we, 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 the press tour has finally started. People are getting excited. I think people will get more and more excited as this thing will build up momentum. Hopefully the fight lives up to the expectation. Yeah, I hope the fight does live up to the expectation. It's going to be fabulous July 29th. The Beast, 18 and 2, 11 wins by knockout. Well known to boxing fans, Mexican action fighter who is ready to make a statement against Franklin Gonzalez, 25 and 2. All 25 of his victories have come by knockout. Born and raised in Venezuela, they are in our main event. Ten rounds in the featherweight division. Mike Goldberg, Chris Algieri, Pauli Malinaji. I still feel the emotion. My uncle fought in Vietnam. He was just honored with one of the flights with my cousin recently. And you think about the contribution that's always been made by our armed forces to keep our freedom free. That is truly the ultimate sacrifice. And I always used to always say, Chris, about Brian Stan, the Marine who was a mixed martial artist forever. He is the guy that you want your daughter to marry, but you never want your son to fight. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. I mean, you said it. You said it best in the ring. You know, freedom ain't free, and there's a reason that we're honoring these 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 heroes today, and and making our lives the way they are in this free country. No question about it. We talk about warriors. We talk about going to battle. The real battle is there. But we do have a good battle, Paulie, in our main event. And Franklin Gonzalez, obviously, he's got a little bit of power because you can say what you will about Alvarez's amateur record, but the pro is 25 wins, 25 knockouts. Oh, yeah. yeah he's, got a, he's got more than a little power there with that, with that kind of <laughs> knockout record, you know? And uh, not only does he have knockout power, but he brings it. He, he's a, sort of a short guy for his weight class, so he has to sort of make up, make up uh, ground, uh, shall we? say uh, in covering the distance in order to land that big power so he uh, like, like like the champ said earlier tonight uh, Chris he was saying that uh, you know he's been compared to Isaac Pitbull Cruz and in some ways he is I think he's a little bit more reckless I think I think Pitbull is a bit more tidy and and, and, and technically sound uh, Alvarez can be can be fun because he's uh, uh, um, jumping all the way in and 
And Sanchez, a big prospect, still with an outstanding record at 26 years old, 18 and 2, worked with Joel Diaz for a while, had a loss on Showbox, but he wants to bounce back in Wednesday night fight fashion here on Pro Box TV. Yeah, at the open, you know, Paulie, the champ, mentioned how, the, you know, his two losses were super, super close. Yes. So he, he could be an undefeated fighter here, which in which case he probably wouldn't be on, show, on Pro Box. <laughs> but, so, but we were lucky that we got him. And this is one of those fights where, like, it, it, the way they match up, it's guaranteed fireworks. I think this is going to be the fight of the night. You got two guys who are really coming at it, have a lot on the line, all action. Well, Mark my I, words. I, I will say Sanchez has taken on an undefeated guy at, at, on show box and, and, and won the fight. So he's he, he whether he's undefeated or not, I think he's the kind of guy who would test himself yep. nonetheless. And, and my mistake before I said Alvarez, that's the, the previous fight. It's Gonzalez, Franklin Gonzalez I'm talking about. Yep, yep. And indeed it was a win in round number one. So it is our main event of the evening. And if it's going to be fight of the night, Chris, <laughs> the bar has been set, been set. very high. <laughs> Saul Sanchez, Franklin Gonzalez, scheduled for 10 rounds in the featherweight division. Last second stoppage by Dominic Valle, dominant performance by Jonathan Cardoso. And now we are set for our main event of the evening. There is Franklin Gonzalez. Now, Chris, we talked about it in the open. Rough, tough, short, aggressive guy. What are his keys to victory in tonight's main event? Well, the key is to be aggressive. I mean, that's him by nature. I don't think it really that's really a key to victory. That's just the way that he is. Next, take advantage of the real estate. Once he does get inside, Paulie mentioned that we has to, he has to close that distance. He's a shorter guy. Once you're there, though, you got to let your hands go. You can't work really hard to get in and then not do anything to get tied up. It takes two to tango when, it talks about, when you talk about tire, tie, uh, uh, tying up. And then fire off. Fire off those counters because he does move his head pretty well. He pulls straight back, but he's got a little bit of shoulder roll defense. If he can fire off that and keep his man honest, I think he'll have a lot of su success tonight. 26-year-old uh, Venezuelan Franklin Gonzalez rallied late in his most recent loss to Manuel Flores, was knocked down in the fifth, looking to return to his winning ways, as is this man, Saul the Beast Sanchez. Keys to victory for the beast, Paulie. Yeah, well, he's a, he's a taller guy. When, when, when it comes to Gonzalez, everybody's going to be taller. So use it, utilize that height and reach. He's got some good hand speed. So uh, it, 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 if you're using your height and reach, that hand speed can kind of come into play. Attack the body. You know, Gonzalez likes to bring it. He's, he's, he has a pretty good gas tank. Attack the body, slow him down. Take a walk. Get around the ring. Create some distance. Change the rhythm a little bit. That'll work out well if he's able to use the other two keys to victory as well. Some of the intangibles include, if you, if you looked at it on paper, you would say that Sanchez has the advantages in almost every regard, but Sanchez is in a real fight tonight since Gonzalez, quite obviously, with 25 wins all by knockout, has a heavy set of hands. Heavy set of hands, and he's just a tough mentality. He's a fighter, but you watch him, and you can see it right away. He's, he's very aggressive. He's got the mentality of, of a fighter, so puts a lot of pressure, and he's, he's a tough guy in there. Set for our main event of the evening. With the official introductions once again, here is Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Pro Box TV main event of the evening. Ten rounds in the featherweight division. Esta en el vent principal. Palea Pautada, Diaz Asaltos, en peso pluma. Los Jueces, your judges. Joanne Richard, Michael Ross, and Brian Gary. Your referee in charge, El Arbitro, is Christopher Young. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white with gold, in La Esquina Azul con Pantalones Blanco y Dorado, pesando 124.8 libras. Weighing in at 124.8 pounds, with a record of 25 wins, two losses, all 25 wins by way of knockout. Con record, 25 victorias, dos derrotas, con 25 por la vía del knockout de los teques, Venezuela, Franklin El Abuelo. Fight.
riding out of the red corner, wearing the black with gold. In la esquina rojo con pantalones negro y dorado, pesando 122 puntos, dos libras, weighing in at 122.2 pounds, with a record of 18 wins, two losses, 11 wins by knockout, con record 18 victorias, dos derrotas, con 11 por la vía del knockout, from Pacoima, California, Saul the Beast Sanchez. Okay, Janine, you know what time it is. Janine, fight hard, fight clean, touch him up. Main event of the evening, scheduled for 10 rounds, our tail of the team. 26-year-old Saul Sanchez against 26-year-old Franklin Gonzalez, who weighed in at 124.8, and will have a slight reach advantage. Hell. Here we go! It's time to fight. Gonzalez in the white and gold trunks, black and gold trunks for Sanchez. You know, both guys are listed at the same height, and actually Gonzalez is listed at a longer reach. I don't think either of those are correct. Sanchez looks to be taller and longer. Yeah, Gonzalez is one of those guys everybody's going to be taller than him at their yeah. three fights. He yeah. throws at me intentions as both are. Oof. Oh, yeah. Oh. Good left hook upstairs. <laughs> Power on display early from Franklin Gonzalez. Oh. Both of these guys like to throw hard punches. And worthy of note. This is the 21st oh. professional bout for Sanchez. He has never been stopped. Sanchez landed a beautiful counter right hand right on the point that of the chin and went down and buckled him, yep. These guys are throwing with bad intentions, both of them. And those, oh. Oh, that, if that was, on the, that was on the chest. If that one, if he got that one up to the chin, man, that could have been dangerous. No set of punches thrown by these two guys. These guys, guys all dynamite or nothing. Do not go get a beer right now. This is, <laughs> this is not one of those fights. Ooh. Doubling up with the left hook. And both men coming off setbacks. Two for Gonzalez, both split decision. And the split decision loss for Sanchez. I don't know if you guys at home can hear these shots. Both of them are throwing heat and landing with real power. Yeah, no change ups here, all fastballs. <laughs> all fastballs. All gas, no brakes, both these guys. <laughs> oh! Yo, Gonzalez, he, he picks his punches really nice. Nice little counter on the inside with that left hand. Aye. Man, he is a powerful guy. Gonzalez has a little bit more versatility, too, with the head movement and whatnot. He so uses defense both blocking and slipping, while Sanchez just kind of tries to block everything. He's just staying right in front. And, and oh, man. And Gonzalez is really finding a home with those lead hooks, leaping explosive shots. Gonzalez now lives in Denver, spends some of his time training in Las Vegas. And we talked about that with the keys of victory with Gonzalez, how he has that upper body rhythm. When he fires off that, he could be really dangerous. We're seeing that from the open. And Chris, you made a comment after yesterday's fighter meetings that Gonzalez has a good attitude. He's a fighter, but he's a humble kid and he's nice. Oh, yeah, in the fighter meetings, you could tell he was very, very humble, very happy to be here. But he's a, he's a true fighter. He has him in town. You can see that in the way he he, he has an aura in the ring. He, yes. he wants to he wants to bang. Yeah, he's confident. I'll tell you what, he's boxing well off that back foot, letting Sanchez come to him. Maybe Sanchez might be, Ten uh, seconds. This is for the might be apt to take up one of those keys and go for a walk and let Gonzalez come to him, maybe. The only direction he's walking right now is right at Gonzalez, and it's not working out. Yeah, Gonzalez is being the guy that you catch him, but then he hits you when you catch him. You're staying with one punch, and he's countering you. You understand? You're dropping that left hand right after the jab. You understand? You can't do that. Edgar Hustle. Movement right after now. He's staying low. You got to jab up, jab down, and then do the overhand right. And then you got to roll under. You understand? You can't stay still. You say too fast, or too fast. Six, two, three, two. You don't want to get in front of you. You don't want to get in front of you. You don't want to get in front of you. You don't want to get in front of you. Intelligent. You get in front of you, we move. Okay? Okay? You told Gonzalez, keep yourself occupied with it when you're in front of him with that side-to-side -side movement. 
and that, he's done, he's done a good job of that. It's both set up his offensive Six attack, up. as you were saying, in the, in the keys, champ, and also to allow him to be slowly defensively. Round number two, white and gold trunks for Venezuela's Franklin Gonzalez. Saul Sanchez fighting out of the suburbs of Los Angeles, California, the Mexican in the oh. black and gold trunks. And you hear more heavy line and a nasty Ooh. uppercut to follow. Oh. This is a firefight. Sanchez forcing Gonzalez back. Sanchez has some good inside timing on him. These guys have, are not having trouble fighting each other, and they are landing bombs. We've got ourselves a fight! This is what Wednesday night fights here on your boxing channel. ProBox TV is all about. Both men already starting to get marked up. We've seen both men wobble, both men hurt, landing big shots. And damn, man, it's gone off like crazy. They keep throwing like this. The three of us are going to get marked up. I, th I thought I was jinxing it by saying this was going to be the fight of the night. <laughs> I think God they're living up to it. Oh, well, the bar has been raised very high, but I think they're worthy of it. Well. That's one thing I think uh, Sanchez needs to do is start to jab his way in. He's not jabbing it. He's following no, no, uh, no uh, Gonzalez around, but he's not using the jab to, to kind of disrupt the rhythm of Gonzalez. So Gonzalez gets to a nice little groove and then you know punches at those different angles and, 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 and Sanchez gets troubled. But I tell you, when Sanchez punches in between, I tell you, he's had some good success, both in round one early with that, with that right hand he had early in the round before Gonzalez took over the remainder of the round and now earlier in this round as well. Yeah, he landed another one a few moments ago with that straight right hand. When he throws it nice and short and aims for the chin, he's had success. A make or break time in the careers of Gonzalez oh. and Sanchez. Jeez. One guy gets stung and then he comes right back and cracks the other one. Sanchez undoubtedly a game opponent. 11 of his 18 wins have been finishes. Yeah, I think Sanchez needs to use that jab more. I mean, I, I think it would it would help him tremendously in terms of, of breaking up the rhythm of Gonzalez. Even when he's using it, he's just kind of placing it out there. He needs to snap that jab out a little bit and disrupt the rhythm of Gonzalez. Sanchez in the fighter meetings yesterday said that he was going to be aggressive and go forward. I was surprised that he said that. I thought he was it was a little bit gamesmanship, but it's not. He is going forward right in right in the front door, not using that jab like I've seen him use in the past. Just missed with that big uppercut. <laughs> Right hand from Sanchez. Nice snappy shots there from Sanchez. Listen for the bell. There's that jab that you spoke about, champ. Yeah, and he, and he needs to be more consistent because it. it, it oh! Uh, no! The little boy, the little boy Gonzalez setting up some of that stuff. Our ultimate fan experience. Fair and Hotel for two to Tampa, Florida. Ringside seats, all access to fight night. Hang out with the talent here at Pro Box TV for the Hall of Famer, Juan Manuel Marquez, and $1,000 of cold, hard cash, our ultimate fan experience. Here's your winner. It is Talmadge East. Congratulations to Talmadge East. We talked about our ultimate fan experience, set it up two weeks ago on our one-year anniversary oh. show. We look forward to meeting Talmadge in get person. Off, get off. Stop, stop, stop. Round keep three. Clean, keep it clean. Round three, both guys' faces look like they've been 10 rounds. <laughs> When I, when I started to say round three, Chris, I was thinking, wow, round three? <laughs> yeah, a lot of action in the first two. See, Gonzalez uses that snappy jab, and, 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 and what it does is it prevents Sanchez from setting up any offense at all. See, Sanchez he's kind of sort of waits too long. He snapped out a jab there, but and see now, it's, you see how what it, what it forced Gonzalez to do? It forced Gonzalez to step over and start to reset. If Sanchez oh. can, can, 
good right here. I mean, jeez. Sanchez has a win back in 2019 against the man we've seen here on Pro Box TV, Brandon Benitez. You know, Benitez is a good fighter. I like Benitez and I we saw him. Yep. Manuel Flores at 14 and 0. Earned the split decision, eight round Ooh, victory body back shot. in February against Gonzalez. Sanchez gave a smile there. He's like, yeah, I got you, yeah. He's shaking his head. Yeah, these, <laughs> yo, these guys like to fight. They are rough. <laughs> Haven't seen a lot of body shots from either man, but Sanchez landed a really good left hook and seemed to take some of the wind out of the sails of Gonzalez. Which was in your keys to victory there, Paulie, for, for Sanchez. Even though you've got a fire plug in Gonzalez in front of you, you want to take take that gas tank down a little bit. Yeah, it's been about that. a year to the date, guys, since Sanchez lost the 10 round split decision to Eros Correa. And that's the thing, once you, if you can take the sails out of his gas tank with the body shots, it'll also make him not, not move as much as well, you know, with that head movement and whatnot, because as you get tired, you start throwing stuff overboard, stuff you won't use, you know, and then and the things that first start to go with are the rhythmic stuff, you know, because you got to punch, so that'll go last. People don't think about how uh, uh, fainting and head movement are actually tiring, and if you're, if you're hurt to the body, you, like yeah. you said, those, those are going to go out the window. Sneaky little uppercut, but Sanchez starting to showcase more of his offense as the fight continues. Nice double right hand there from Gonzalez, threw one over the top and then one straight. Was a, fell a little bit short. Again, for me, Sanchez should be Ooh. jabbing there. He doesn't jab, he takes the hook and hook for his trouble. I like how Gonzalez, even though there's not jabs coming at him, he's using head movement yeah. to mask his, his initial offense. Yeah. And he uses his own jab off that rhythm. Aye. Loads up on a big left hook when he rolls out. Just missed with the counter left hook. And you said it early, champ. Both men are very confident and still that way. They're both very confident in what they're doing. Yeah, their body language both told, leads you to believe that they still both feel that they still have the winning mentality, both of them. But Gonzalez getting off more shots. I'm curious to see who's the first guy who's gonna bend. Yeah, because they're both they're both meeting right in the middle. shots. You know, we talked about that body shot Sanchez landed. We're gonna see it coming up, I think. Right. And that was the shot Gonzalez landed there. That's a good body shot there. That was the one where Sanchez looked at Gonzalez and told him, yeah, yeah, I got you with that one. Hey, hey. Boston boy, good Southie. Peter Welch, one of the famous boxing trainers, used to always say, and I know you know Peter as well, Chris, slip and rip. You got to slip and rip. And we have seen that from Gonzalez on frequent occasion early in this fight. More so in this fight than I've seen in his past. He's really putting it together really nicely. A lot of times he'll move those shoulders and not throw. Not tonight. He's just slipping and ripping. And smart feet, smart fighter. This is what Peter used to always tell me. Salas fighting now with his hands down, feeling himself, finding his rhythm. And when he says that, Chris, it makes me think when Paulie gets Ooh. fired up and says, use guys. <laughs> now it's in that same vernacular, right, Paulie? Similar, similar. Similar. <laughs> Virtually identical, but not identical. Mm -hmm. A movement by Gonzalez, as you guys but, but, talked about. But he's punching off the movement, you know? Right. And what that's doing is also it's preventing Sanchez from, from getting off. Because Sanchez is clearly the guy that has to be playing to the punch. And he's not able to set himself to throw off, get off enough punches for me to win these rounds. Oh, big when left he, hook from Sanchez. When he does set himself, he gets off those shots, but it just, he's not getting a chance to set. And the chances he's getting to set are fewer and further between. And that's why I think if he can put Gonzalez out of position with a jab. Three. Down. It was a straight right hand to the body, and the, the, the feet of Gonzalez came out from under. The problem I have with that one is his back foot slid out, so it was kind of, it's kind of it might be wet back there or something. I wasn't 
that wasn't a, uh, I mean, I mean, that wasn't even a thing with a balance problem. That was literally, I think the, the, the canvas was wet there. I don't know, because he has, he's thrown a couple punches like that where he had one foot off the ground and kind of slid out. Because he does that little bouncy movement. We'll see now if it ends up coming to close. Right now, I think Gonzalez is comfortably ahead because he's just, he's finding the more, more rhythmic shots than his Sanchez. But of course, we still got more than half the fight to go. And he's burning a lot of energy. See, I'll tell you one thing, if anything, Sanchez at least, at least conserving energy and could come back to, no, stop, to stop, get stop, an stop, advantage stop. later in the fight. Who knows? No, I mean, conserving, yes, but he's also missing. Missing some of these shots because Gonzalez is being tricky. But yeah, he's, he's definitely not putting out as much juice as Gonzalez, who's, got, who's moving, rolling his shoulders, and throwing bombs. Before the fight, almost a year ago to the date against Korea, Sanchez had a six-fight win streak, and four of those wins were finishes. So those were four of his 11 career wins by knockout. Right side of Gonzalez's face is starting to get busted up. Outside the eye, above the eye, nose, a little bit of blood. Yeah, that's that left hook of Sanchez, right? Maybe even the jab? Heavy jab from Gonzalez. He has caught him with a few left hooks, but the right hand has had the most effect when he lands him on the chin. Ooh. Aye, big left hook. That, that won't help the swelling. No. Yeah. You're only looking for one punch. Dame la agua en la cabeza. How are we feeling? Huh? My eyes are good? Yeah, everything's good. But don't look for one, but you gotta get for it. Listen, you gotta get to that body a little bit more. Well, both these guys are gonna know they were in a fight tomorrow. Big shots, heavy shots landed by both men. There we see a replay of the score knockdown. Let's see what, if we can see the feet here. Gonzalez lands a right hand. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right there, champ. That looked more like a slip. I mean, there was a punch on the end. You know, he did he did go down on the end of a punch, but his it seemed yeah, like his legs slid out. Slipped out. Six is out. That was a little bit of a better angle to see from where we're sitting. And there wasn't a complaint from Gonzalez either, which no. kind of maybe he threw it off a little bit. Yeah. The battle continues. Round number five, 25 and two. Franklin Gonzalez in the white and gold trunks, black and gold trunks for 26 year old Saul Sanchez. Mike Goldberg, the magic man, Paulie Molinaji, Chris Algieri, glad to be with you. Wednesday night fights on your boxing channel, Pro Box TV. And Chris, I want to borrow your crystal ball after the show. Because fight of the night prediction on this one, I think you're nailing it, brother. Yeah, I do my homework, man. I watch these guys. I've been watching these guys all week. Oof. A good, sharp, hard right hand from Gonzalez. Sanchez has landed effectively oh. as well. Run on Q made me look good there, guys. Sharp counter. Yep, right hand by Sanchez. Good timing shot. You know, Gonzalo sometimes has a tendency to kind of jump in there, and he looked look, look like he kind of jumped in with that jab, and uh, over, right over the top came Sanchez. Good timing shot. Yeah, timed it nice. He punched right across the shoulders. Sanchez, set of Gonzalez, he waits a lot. He's a counter puncher to win. Sanchez told us he's just got to be me. Just got to be himself. Put the pressure on him and go to the body. You sure Sanchez wasn't talking about himself? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, that sounds more like yeah. himself than actually. Yep. Gonzalez hasn't been waiting on anything. He's moving, firing all night long. And so Sanchez has landed some good shots in between Gonzalez here and there in this fight, including that counter right hand earlier in the round, and even a few times earlier in this fight. Since, again, it's been it's been too few and far, far between. But when he's gotten those shots in between, they've, been, they've landed beautifully. Both the left hand and the right hand from Sanchez, he's timed them really well. Good combination a moment ago by Saul Sanchez. You know what I like about Sanchez, even though we've had, he's had some trouble finding Gonzalez at times, he's never lost interest. He's never got discouraged by the shots. He's just waiting for his shot. Yeah, yeah, and, and, he, and he's consistently brought that pressure, so yep. that's at least caused mental stress uh, on Gonzalez. Make Gonzalez feel like he's got to fight his way out of trouble constantly. And that can wear him out later in the fight. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, Gonzalez seems to be in fantastic shape, but we're only in the fifth round. Still a lot more fight to go. These men know each other have been in the same training facility together, sparred a little bit. Franklin said, and I quote, he needs to know about me. I don't need to know about him. 30 seconds, round five. 10th 
10 rounder scheduled for Franklin Gonzalez. He has gone the distance once. That was a split decision setback in February of last year. Final seconds of the fifth. Oh, good counter shot there by Gonzalez and followed up with a with the uppercut of his own, his, I mean, an uppercut and a combination of his own. Hey, for a guy with 25 wins, by the way, a knockout, I mean, he's got some nice boxing yeah. skills as well. Good, good rhythm. Good reaction by Christopher Young at the end, too. He blocked that punch. change when you when you fight off your rhythm let's keep fighting off that rhythm hey we see that beautiful counter shot from Sanchez over the top beautiful Ooh. timing as soon as Gonzalez was moving to his left or his right earlier moved to his left as soon as he changed direction Sanchez had him lined up and caught him with that right hand and also he came in high you know Gonzalez yeah. usually keep, does a good job of staying low came up high and uh, it was easy to find him over the top of that shot Keep an eye on, no pun intended, on the eye of Saul Sanchez. A lot of swelling. He talked to his corner about it after round number five. Round six. 25 and two, Franklin Gonzalez. 18 and two, Saul Sanchez. And again, we get ourselves a firefight. Sanchez, that mental that pressure that Sanchez has started to was putting on earlier now is starting to pay, pay some dividends. He's consistently going after Gonzalez, and Gonzalez now making wider defensive moves that, that are putting him in position to get hit. And again, Sanchez has never been stopped. Gonzalez has never been stopped. And he's never won a fight went that went the distance. 25 wins, 25 knockouts. Ooh. Body shot followed up by the left. I think that body shot might have affected Gonzalez. It stopped him for a second, didn't yeah. it, Chris? Oh! Good eye, Chad. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Walk to me, baby. That started with the body shot. All right. Yeah, it was a right hand to the body and then yep. caught him in the middle with the left hook. There's an overhand right for good measure. Now Sanchez pushing forward. Oh, body shot again. Down he goes again. Body Four, shots are different. This could be it. Five. Yep. Six, seven, and we saw him react. We'll continue. Walk that way. Come to me. Listen, one more knockdown. The fight's over. Box. Body shot. What we talked about. Keep he goes up, to the up. body again. I want a, a, a touch low, but the, the the cup is starting to come up. Sanchez has a great opportunity here. Yeah, it's so a long time. Gonzalo and Dallas didn't have to be, be to find deceptive ways to survive this round. There was that three-second delay with the body shot, Paulie and Chris, that we always talk about with Gonzalez, and Sanchez sees the moment. Oh, I was there. Down he goes again, and it is all over! Saul Sanchez finishes what? Franklin Gonzalez! Uh, and Gonzalez, you know what, even he knows. You know what, the referee told me three times that I'm done, and yeah, but he wasn't getting up anyway. And you know what, man, this one's it. Spit out the mouthpiece and everything, I mean, I think, you know, you got to credit Sanchez. We can criticize him for not getting off enough shots. He was processing everything. Yep. Of when he was getting that timing early in the early in the fight, you saw it here and there, but it wasn't nearly enough to win the rounds, right? And then you started seeing it more and more and more as he was processing. He was starting to get off more shots in between Gonzalez. That last body shot knockdown, the one that ended the fight, again, was just as Gonzalez was throwing. Slip, counter the body. I mean, it, I, Sanchez built up to this. You got to give him credit. Because even I wasn't seeing it. I was saying, you know, he's got to get off more shots but really Sanchez was seeing exactly what he wanted to see and he, and he knew he was going to start upping the pace as as, as, as he uh, saw the openings fit to be thrown at. Here we're going to see all three. That was the one that, that started all the trouble. It was a straight right hand, very, very short. You saw Gonzalez stay. Take an extra beat down there. I, yeah. I, I saw that he was hurt and then there's a left hook yeah. and that was a they good shot too. Shot there. But it's right in the middle, like you said. Oof. Yeah. Right, right underneath the elbow as he's throwing his right hand a little but bit wide. The same side. Here's, the, here's the second knockdown. 
Straight right hand, and then that's a left hook on the, right around the elbow. Nasty, nasty shot. And especially once he's already been hit to the body and yeah. down, yeah, now that you're was really hurt. Then that. you hit him right in the yeah. middle of the yeah. punch. Yeah. And Gonzalez just got up. You could have gave him a 35 count. Yeah. He wasn't making, he wasn't oh, beating that. <laughs> and, and again, a good timing shot. And that, and that last one, again, Sanchez, the concentration to start to lead more as he realized he was seeing the openings and also stay on those counters that he was seeing earlier in the fight. Great fight, back and forth action. Gonzalez put up a great fight up until that point. Sanchez, like you said, processing everything, looking for his spots, chipping away, chipping away. Awesome, awesome fight. Goldie, though so Sanchez never got stopped, you jinxed him. I know. <laughs> I mean, I know. No, Gonzalez never got stopped. That's jinxed right. Him. I jinxed him. <laughs> Sanchez, well, not long said to win. Thank God I didn't pressure the fight, though. It was go good to fight. the body. <laughs> yeah, you did pick the fight. I mean, I, I, did you, I think you said it in the last round, too. Didn't you say yeah, it? Did. You yes. Said it. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yes. The second round, you said he never got stopped. The guy got stopped with three knockdowns. 30 seconds later. So it's kind of my fault. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell him. I won't, I won't <laughs> tell him if you don't tell him. <laughs> he hits hard. Don't tell him, please. I'll tell you what, what a spectacular main event of the evening. These, Both men with ill intentions. These guys started guns blazing from round number one. Gonzalez looked like to be the slicker guy. He was landing some big shots. And you said Champ Sanchez biding his time, analyzing, taking big shots. He looked like he could have been in trouble at times. There we see clip, clipping yeah. Gonzalez early. He's hurting, hurting him with that straight right hand, punching with Gonzalez. And then he started to time him a little bit here, a little bit there. Sanchez you saw him smiling when he landed that left hook to the liver. Knew he had him there. That was really the difference was, I think, the body work from Sanchez. That was the one thing Gonzalez was not able to do all night long. Sanchez was able to capitalize and build on the body work. And, and it's subtle. The body work is subtle. It, it, it stays, it's, it's shots in the bank, it's subtle, and they were oh so precise. I mean, Sanchez doesn't even have to throw them so hard. That wasn't a hard shot at just, all. You just throw them precise. And as the fight wears on, they have more and more effect because uh, you already have a naturally tiring fighter. A guy like Gonzalez fights at a high rhythm, moving all over the place and everything. So you start touching them a little bit to the body. Those body shots by the mid rounds are starting to affect. Them, and we saw what the results were. Great main event to make it official. Here is Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to a halt at two minutes, three seconds of the sixth round due to the three knockdown rule. Your winner by technical knockout, El Ganador por Knockout Tecnico, Saul Dabi Sanchez. Sanchez, the first man to finish Franklin Gonzalez, who truly came out. Guns a blazing. Sanchez weathered the storm. Then he started to get into his game, which was what he told us in the fighter interviews, Polly. Go to the body. Yep, he sure did. Did he ever? Don't forget, two weeks from tonight, we are live from. Sinaloa, Mexico, another action-packed edition of our Wednesday night fights. Main event, 10-round super lightweight matchup. Sinaloa's own Pedro Guavera, 39 wins, 22 knockouts. His opponent from the Yucatan, Miguel Herrera. Then a bantamweight showcase in our co-main event, 22-year-old Sebastian Hernandez, 12-0 with 11 knockouts against another hometown favorite, Nazario Castro. Riding a nine-fight unbeaten streak. Join us two weeks from tonight, Wednesday, June 28th, right here on Pro Box TV. Chris Algieri, he had the best prediction of the night, but I will tell you one thing. Our Wednesday night fight matchups continue to deliver. If this was your first show tuning into Pro Box, this is exactly what Pro Box is. We got great fighter, we got great fights made with good fighters, guys action packed. We had three stoppages, back and forth action uh, all the way around. If this is your first time in Pro Box, stick take, around. Stick yeah, around. Yeah. Get a get a front, a front row seat because this is how we we always have it. Polly, we can write all the mission statements we want. We can voice these promos, or we can just show the highlights of yeah, those three fights. You can give all the propaganda, but you got to <laughs> sell and deliver it, and that's what we do. We got to. We're, gonna, we're always going to make sure we sell and deliver. You saw this tonight. If, you, if, you, if you've watched us before, you know we're, de we're delivering for you. And we're going to continue to deliver. Check us out again on the 28th of this month. And Dominic Valle literally delivered at the buzzer for oh, the knockout he, 
ahead. Did he ever, yeah. <laughs> Did he ever. 259 of the sixth and final round. Jonathan Cardoso looked spectacular, Chris. Uh, he was a man on a mission. He has been for his past two fights. Right. Coming off that loss, he, he he wants to right the ship, and tonight he did just that. He did indeed, and then Saul Sanchez, victorious, going back to his winning ways, finishing Franklin Gonzalez with numerous body shots. Congratulations to the victors. All six fighters brought it tonight. Gave us another wonderful Wednesday night right here on your boxing channel, Pro Box TV. There he is, Dominic Valle. First fight since November of last year, and he looked outstanding. Viva Brazil, Jonathan Cardoso, proudly representing Sao Paulo as Oscar Alvarez Jr.'s corner threw in the towel. And then in our main event of the evening, Saul Sanchez becomes the first man to stop Franklin Gonzalez for the Magic Man. Pauli Malinaji, Chris Algieri, Mike Goldberg saying so long. Until next time, we see you right here on Pro Box TV.